Hello everybody, this is TechCut, and in this video what I'm going to be doing is checking out the Linux distribution that I believe does KDE Plasma better than any other Linux distribution out there today. This is a distribution that has been requested for me to look at numerous times on other videos, and this is Farron OS. So I have kind of played around in this a little bit just to get a feel for it. But we're going to be going over it, checking it out, looking at some of the unique features and why I think it is awesome. And particularly for the person who is new to Linux or somebody coming over from Windows 10 and wants that same kind of traditional feel that they're used to. They do have this laid out fairly well with a bunch of different information on everything you need to know. Uh, you're in complete control of just about everything, including some additional tools that they've added that I will be going over in just a bit. Under here they have news, so the actual latest release was from this month, January 2021, where they went ahead and did uh, added a couple new wallpapers, they upgraded Plasma to 5.20, uh, they added a couple different features, changed some things, uh, did some changes to their theme, which we'll also be going over in just a sec, and a couple different fixes. And the link to everything you've been seeing will be in the description. I will note when I am looking at this monitor, it might look like I'm looking at the ceiling. I am not. Uh, going over to the DistroWatch page, this is where you can kind of learn the basics. It is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, featuring KDE Plasma with tweaked themes, fonts, and a couple other things. So. With all that said, actually jumping over to Farron OS. This is the login screen right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in my password and this is it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's basic KDE Plasma, but it looks way better than regular KDE Plasma. I think it's the breeze theme they use by default in KDE and it looks good, but it's not the greatest. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I get into some of the applications and some of their custom things is actually go to their welcome screen. And this is the welcome screen that will launch when you first boot up your system. And within this little um, application, there are a couple things that are handy. Starting with the introduction, this will go over what is Farron OS, scrolls down, and it kind of gives their core objectives here. What it does state right here that it aims to make or aims to give you a similar experience to Microsoft Windows. Mac OS and Google Chrome OS. It then goes into some more information on Farron OS, Linux as a um, ecosystem, some of their objectives, which I love their objectives, increase Linux desktop user adoption, create a distro for everybody's needs, and actually contribute to the upstream projects such as Linux Mint, Ubuntu, and Debian. One thing you will notice in Farron OS is it does pull some of the better applications from Cinnamon, from Gnome, and from KDE. So they're really good at picking some of the best of the best desktop environments. Uh, what makes Farron OS, Ubuntu, KDE Plasma, and their applications, which speaking of applications, let's go ahead and dive on into what comes with it. If you go down here to their application launcher, um, we can right click and figure out this is the simple menu for KDE. If you don't like the look of anything you see, being that it's KDE, you can literally just change it. Uh, example of that, show alternatives. These are the um, application menus in the system. You do notice it comes with a tiled menu, a menu based on Windows 10. So if I did switch over to that and open it up, you can see this takes heavy inspiration from Windows 10. I personally don't like it, but if you are a fan of it, well, it's as simple as a right click, show alternatives, and then you could change it to whatever you prefer. And another thing that's really good about KDE, if you're not too familiar with it, is you can right click on just about anything and edit it, change it, make the system exactly how you want it to be. Now, with that aside, kinda, I kinda went off track here, the applications. It comes with Velvality. Now, I am probably saying that Velvality, I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but it is cool that it, this is the default web browser that they decided to ship with this that's not as common as something like Firefox or Chrome. But overall, this is a great web browser. Now, if we go ahead and go down to internet, I was kind of playing around in here a little bit. One thing that's kind of cool, but the icon for Brave hasn't loaded yet. They have a very easy tool to go ahead and download and install various web browsers. You can see here, I did test it with Brave because it says uninstall, but all you need to do is click on install and it will install that web browser after you put in your password. If you want more information on the web browsers, you could just click on them and it gives you a good rundown. 
whether that be brave or a water fox, which I've honestly never used water fox. Um, that might be something that's interesting. After everything that's going on, not everything, but after the latest uh, Mozilla blog, um, I would recommend you watch the video that DistroTube put out on Mozilla Firefox and see if that may sway you away from Firefox. Not to get too political, we'll just leave it at that. So in short, a simple tool that you can use to manage your web browsers. Obviously, you can just use your software manager. This is just a little thing to help new people and to it's also really good at kind of showing people what is out there and what is available. Whether if you want to go full board Microsoft and go with Microsoft Edge, or you want to get something like Gnome Web or Waterfox. So closing that out, that was kind of the internet category. The other things you will see in there is KDE Connect, which is a great utility that I'd recommend you try out if you have a smartphone. Under graphics, we have Document Scanner, Krita, LibreOffice, Stuff, Photos. Basic things you'd expect. Under multimedia, we have Cheese, VLC Media Player, has the suite of LibreOffice software. Under science and math, it's more Libre. And then you have a wide selection of settings features and different system utilities. Now, one thing I did mention earlier, the polling different applications. Uh, this is KDE, the KDE Plasma as the base system. Generally, KDE Plasma ships with the KDE Partition Manager. But you see here, this tool is the GNOME Disk Utility. If I go ahead and go to About Disks, it's the GNOME Disk Utility, which I was really impressed by this because I actually prefer disks over KDE software when it comes to this. This is a lot more user-friendly, easy to manage. It's not very overwhelming. It is great. And then we go over to the File Manager. This is their file manager that they're using. In KDE Plasma, the default file manager is Dolphin. But with this, if we go over to help and go to about, we can see that they're using Nemo, which is the Cinnamon file manager software. So that's the example or one of the examples of them pulling what, in my opinion, is the better software from the better desktop environments. If we go ahead and jump back over here, under utilities, we do have a couple different things. We have art calculator, the disks, files, emoji selector. We have maps, which I believe this is no maps. We could go ahead and fire it up and check, which it is. Yes, it is. And you can see even in this virtual machine, it is very smooth and fluid, even for a KDE Plasma. Usually KDE, especially these custom versions of KDE, tend to be heavier because people or the developers of them add a whole bunch of stuff to it. But in this case, they just tweaked some things, added only what you need to run an efficient operating system and didn't really bog it down with too many things. Let's go ahead and go and open the task manager so we can, or the system maintainer. Yeah, yeah I almost forgot about this. This is their system maintenance. This is another custom tool. If I go ahead and go about, you can see this is the Farron maintenance tool, which gives you a couple different settings here, including the ability to set up language packs, set up restore points. This just launches time shift and does it through there. System information, we can see all the information of what's going on on our system. Um, for your information, this is currently running the 5.8 kernel. So it's not the absolute latest, but it's a rather current kernel. So you should have no issues with that. And you could get a bunch more information on your system here and you could just click copy. All this has been copied to my clipboard with a click. You have crash reporting and a couple different options here, mostly involving software, software sources, things like that. So now what I was actually trying to do is go into a system monitor. So we will open up a system monitor just so we can kind of see what is going on in our actual system. And we can see the RAM usage on this virtual machine is right under 900 megabytes, which is really, really good. Anything under a gig is what I kind of deem acceptable for a system like this that I just installed that really doesn't have much going on at all with no other applications open. And even in this virtual machine, you can see that it's writing from basically zero to 2% CPU utilization. So performance wise, it's very, very lightweight. Now, one of the first things I noticed and one of the last things I'm going to be talking about is this little it's cool they added this little clock right here. Like with anything in KDE, like I said, you can right click and get rid of it, change it, move it around. But you click on it, it gives you your clock, your events, your calendar. And then if you go over here, you have your notifications, you can set do not disturb. 
And then this is a very easy way to open up the KDE system settings here. It's KDE, so you have quite a bit of different things you could go ahead and change. The last thing we're gonna take a look at here is the theming of this, which is the Baron OS Dark. Uh, this is the default, it's white. We'll go ahead and switch from the dark to the default just so you can kind of see what that looks like. Overall, their theme is beautiful. I love it. I'll show you, I'll switch to Breeze real quick. This is kind of standard KDE right about here. This is what KDE generally looks like. If I open this up, you can see it's not nearly as pretty, but what I'm saying is very subjective. Go ahead and apply this back, get it to where we were, the Farron theme, Farron, Farron, probably been saying it wrong this whole time. I have a problem with uh, pronouncing or saying something wrong consistently throughout a video, so then I can't even say, hey, I messed up once. It's nope, I've been saying that wrong the, the whole time. Done that a couple different times, particularly with Ubuntu. You don't, it's not pronounced Ubuntu, it's like Ubuntu or Ubuntu. You get my point. I, I'm still figuring figuring it out. Uh, but yeah, that, that basically wraps this up. Um, it is an absolutely magnificent Linux distribution. Of all the Ubuntu-based distributions, just after using this for a little bit, I can see why it's gaining so much traction and so much popularity. And so many of you have suggested me look at it. I do appreciate that. Thank you guys for having me check this out. This distribution, and out of any of the other distributions that ship with KDE Plasma that I've looked at, this is done right. This is what it should be. It should be lightweight. It should be beautiful. It shouldn't be completely bloated with unnecessary tools, utilities, and things you're just not going to use. This is definitely an A tier, if not an S tier Linux distribution. So that basically wraps up this video. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers. I have two of them now. They are on the video right now. Thank both of you so much. If you're interested in looking at my Patreon, there'll be a link down below. You get some perks and things like that, but I'm not gonna get too far into that. If you can't support me there, you can support me by liking this video, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends, groups, Facebook, whatever. But to end, I do hope you have a beautiful day. And goodbye.